Hello friends, I hope everyone is doing great. So this tutorial, as I said, we will continue from where we stopped last time. So last day we discussed about the theory part of confidence interval, uh, jet test, uh, students T distribution test and all. So today we will do some practical examples of it, right? So let's start. Uh, before this guys, I uh, just want to say that if you are uh, viewing these videos, uh, then uh, please help me to grow as well. Uh, so uh, please share this video as much as possible. Subscribe my channels if you are new to these uh, tutorials, and uh, like the click the like button. Okay, uh, it will really help me motivate me in making more and more videos. Shortly, very after this uh, few topics in basic statistics. We'll directly dive into machine learning and it will cover lots of interesting topics out there. So stay tuned uh, and let's continue. So let's see the various uh, problem statements in today's class. So let me, okay. So it's written over here is, a written exam is conducted in a class to determine uh, let me get the pencil. Okay, so uh, to determine a student's capacity of subject understanding. So basically here, it tells us this, an exam has been conducted in the class, okay, to understand the student's uh, basic understanding of the subjects that they are studying in their particular class. Now it is observed that a standard deviation of 100 is observed in the marks tally. Now you see standard deviation of 100 is observed. Meaning, sigma is given. This is our first clue. From the entire lot, a sample of 25 students were taken. So n is 25. Okay. Uh, were taken to study the marks obtained in the exam. And it was found that the average mark is around 520. Right. So average is 520. So this 520 is the average of these samples, right? So n is the number of samples, right? And 520 is, this 520 is the sample mean or the average of these many students. Now construct a 95% CI, meaning construct a 95% confidence interval about the mean. About this mean, construct the CI, meaning plus mean, minus mean. Just now I have discussed, right? So we need to find out that confidence interval. So what is the formula for confidence interval, guys? It is nothing but point estimate, point estimate plus minus Z alpha by two sigma divided by root of N. Here, point estimate is nothing but our sample mean so it is 520 plus minus z alpha by 2 here is alpha is now 95 percent right 95 percent confidence interval meaning 95 percent is our confidence level so what is our significance level then 100 minus this five percent so margin of error or whatever you call it alpha it is 0 0.05, right? So alpha is 0 0.05. So what is alpha by two? This is divided by two, right? So 0 0.025, right? Now sigma, what is sigma? 100 divided by root n. What is n? 25. So 25. So if I can find out this value, then I will be able to find out the confidence interval, right? So my whole job is to find out this value, Z score. Now, you might know that uh, we have studied in our previous classes or previous tutorials. Let's say this is our normal distribution, okay? Gaussian distribution, right? This is the main median mode and all. So if what we studied in Z score, a Z score of two means this much area, area 
for the z score is this one right what was z score actually guys if you remember z score is the number of standard deviations the observation is away from the mean right so it may be in here it may be here doesn't matter but it is the number of standard deviations the observation is away from the mean that was z score right this already we have discussed in our previous classes so basically and what is the area that we were looking this is the area that we are looking right now here in this case if i draw this one also let's say let's say if i draw this normal distributed graph so this is two tail right this are two tails so and it is a symmetry so if you divide it this one it's a symmetrical curve right this side same two same as this one this is the plus side this may be the negative side right so 0.25 percent means this one is uh five percent means five percent means what 0 0.025 here and 0 0.025 here right right so this is this is uh, our uh, uh, margin of error or significance level this is what is given in the question right so what will be the area guys area will be if i take a different color you know the whole area right whole area is one if i subtract this from this one minus 0 0.025 i will get the same right i will get this area right and then i can look up in the z table and find out the value correct because z table z score table gives us area and what is that z score right z score is nothing but number of standard deviation that particular observation is away from the mean this is what actually we want to find find right so when we say z 0 0.025 basically we want to find out this area and how to calculate this area the whole area is one if you subtract one from this particular area which is 0 0.025 which is nothing but if i calculate it let's say one minus 0 0.025 0 0.975 so it is 0 0.975 so this area will we have to look for this area which is nothing but 0 0.975 this particular area will give us the z score so let's find it out okay so 9.975 so remember guys we need to look in the z table this area and this area will help us to find out the z score okay which can we can finally put it over here so i hope that it is quite understandable to you guys right z 0 0.025 why we have written 0 0.025 because alpha is 0 0.05 so alpha by 2 is 0 0.025 and uh, so and and when you when you plot it here when you plot it over here this is this is the area 0 0.025 right this is the area 0 0.025 so how for the z score how we used to calculate we need this is the point we need to calculate this amount of area right this amount of area how to do that the whole area is 1 minus this area is 0 0.25 0 0.025 ultimately 0 0.975 so we need to find out this area in the z table then we can get the z score so let me share my let me share the z table give me one more moment yeah 
Okay. So point nine seven five is the area that we're looking for, right? So you see, we're looking for this area, right? So point zero. This is the Z table, right? Z table dot com. If you search this, then you can get the Z table, the score table. Okay. Similarly, for T table also, T table as I was talking, right? So if you just Google T table, you will get this one. And you see here it is given as DF, right? So DF is nothing but degrees of freedom. Now you know what is degrees of freedom and how important it is to find out basically the T table scores. These are nothing but the scores. I will come to this table. Let me first go to the Z score table. So I I hope that I have explained what exactly these values are, right? These are nothing but the scores. Okay. Now we need to find the area. These are the areas and these are the scores. Basically, this is after the decimal. These are all after the decimal. For example, zero point zero one zero 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 point zero one 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 two one three, right? Like that. So, if I go to find out the area, which was uh nine point nine seven five, right? Point nine seven five. Uh, I guess it is this one. Point nine seven five. See, so it is what one point nine, one point nine six. So one point nine six is the Z score. Okay. So let me again share my screen. Let me again share my screen. Okay, so this value is one point nine six. So five twenty plus minus one point nine six into hundred divided by root five is five. So it is ultimately twenty. So five twenty plus minus right. Six two J twelve one eighteen nineteen one three. So now you can easily calculate the value over here, whatever it is. That will be my hypothesis of interval. So in this way, you will solve this problem. Okay. So you know the question from the question. You can know the tricks if standard deviation is given. Okay. And then just you have to put in the formulas. That's it to find out the confidence interval. Now let's go to the other problem. Here you see, uh, uh, okay. So here a written exam is conducted in a class to determine student capacity of the same question is given, but here the standard deviation is not known. This is not known. We don't know this. Okay, so we don't have any idea about it. So we need to construct a ninety-five percent confidence interval about the mean. So what we will use? We will use the t, right? So t is nothing but again x, right? X t plus minus. Here, what is the interval? It is zero point zero five. Degrees of freedom. We need to find out the degrees of freedom. I will find it out as divided by root n. This is the formula. In the previous case, the formula was this one: z alpha by two, root n by this one, uh, sigma by root n. In this case, the formula is a bit changed. A bit changed. Instead of sigma, we were using sample standard deviation. Okay. Now here the degrees of freedom will be twenty four. Now you may ask why it is twenty four, and I will I will tell you. Okay, I have sample n, which is twenty five. So what will be my DOF? Degrees of freedom n minus one, which is nothing but twenty four. So what is x? What is the sample mean? Five twenty only, right? This is the same similar question. The same as exactly the one that we have solved in the previous example. Only thing I removed is the standard deviation, so the formula has changed. 
So it is again 520 plus minus. We need to look this in the T table. What is standard deviation? 80. What is N? It's 25, right? Uh, 25. Now we need to find out this 0 0.0524. So we go to the T table. Let me again share my share my screen for the T table. Yeah. So point zero five. So point zero five is this one and twenty four. So we need to look 24. What is where is 24? 24. This is degrees of freedom, guys. You see, this is degrees of freedom. Okay, so here we need to look for 24, which is this one, and then 0 0.05. So 0 0.05 is this, right? 1.711. 1.711. So I guess we are looking for 0 0.025, okay, alpha by 2. So it is 2.0, 2.064, okay. So we go back to there, 2.064, right? So 2.064 multiply by this. From here, you can easily calculate the value, right? I leave it to you, okay? So this is the way guys to uh to deal with this t distribution problem statement now let's move on to the other one okay this is a very interesting question now here we will be applying z tests and t tests okay so let's say in a population of diabetic people let's say we have a population of diabetic people the average sugar level was found to be 100 okay the average sugar level was 100 with the standard deviation of 15. Now you see in the population, standard deviation is given. So you know you have to apply that test clearly. Now a company tests a new drug to check whether it increases or decreases the sugar level. So they created the new drug to see whether this, uh, when they apply this drug to these people, whether the sugar level is coming down or going up, whether this particular drug has any impact or not. So a sample of 30 guys are taken. So N will be 30. And the sugar level was checked after the drugs was applied. Okay. And the average sugar level was found to be 140. So we need to find out whether the sugar level of the people have really been affected by this medication or not. And the significance level is given as uh, 0 0.05 means alpha is given as 0 0.05. So what we have in hand, so we know that we need to do Z-test. We know the size, total size, and we know the alpha. So what is the process? First of all, you need to define your null hypothesis. So what is the null hypothesis? Before that, even before that, guys, uh, let me tell you. So alpha is 0 0.05. So you need to know the Z-score, right? Z score just now you had find the Z score for alpha 1.05. What was it? If I go back, it was 1.96, right? 1.96. Now, why I'm saying 1.96? Now we need to see here, find out whether the medication affected the sugar level of the people. Meaning what? Meaning, let's say. If this is the curve of the people, we first of all need to know whether it's a one tail test or a two tail test. Okay. Meaning whether in this particular case, whether we need to consider both increasing or decreasing also. And the statement exactly says the same thing, right? Whether medication has whether affected. So whether it has either increased or decreased. And we know that if it is either increase or decrease, that means we have to conduct a two-tail test. If you have to conduct a two-tail test, then alpha is equal to 0 0.5 means this area is 0 0.025. This area is 0 0.025. If you add this 0 0.025, it will be nothing but 0 0.05, which is alpha 5%. So 
for our null hypothesis to be true, our p value, p value is nothing but the probability of the null hypothesis to be true, right? So the p value has to be within this range. If it is within this range, then we will accept our null hypothesis. If it is not within this range, if it is somewhere here, somewhere here, we will reject our null hypothesis and we will accept our alternate hypothesis. So that's how uh, we will do it. So now, what is our null hypothesis? H naught. We will say that uh, the drug has uh, no effect, let's say. No effect on the population. And what will be my alternate hypothesis? Drug has effect. And now it can be positive effect or a negative effect. I don't know. So we'll just say drugs have effect on the population. This is our assumptions. Null hypothesis and alternate hypothesis. So meaning whatever value we are getting, if that value is greater than 0 0.025, we will reject our null hypothesis, right? If it is falling in this range, the p value fall, if the p value fall in this range, if it is greater than 0, 0 0.025, we will reject null hypothesis. We will also reject our null hypothesis if our p value is less than minus 0 0.025. Because guys, this is the negative area, right? This is a negative area, this is the positive area. So if it is less than minus 0 0.025, we also reject our null hypothesis and accept alternate hypothesis. So for our acceptance of the null hypothesis, the <coughs> sorry, the p value should be greater than minus 0 0.25 and should be less than 0 0.025, meaning this area. Then only we will accept our null hypothesis. Okay. So how we will do it? So we have to calculate the z. So we need to calculate the z value. The p value is nothing but the z value only. So if the z value is less than 0 0.025, 0 0.025, we will accept. If it is less, greater than point minus 0 0.025, we will reject. Okay. So we have to ultimately calculate the z value. So what is the z value? And what is the formula? So the formula for z test statistics is x bar minus mu divided by standard deviation divided by <coughs> root n. This is the formula for z test. Now again, guys, you don't have to remember. You just follow this. And out of practice only, you will be able to calculate everything. OK? So we know the formula. We just put in the values. What is x bar? Is 140. What is mu? That is 100. You remember, mu is the population mean. So, population average sugar level was found to be 100. So, mu is the mu is 100, right? Divided by sigma. What is sigma? 15. So 15. Divided by root of n. What is root n? 30 participants. So, 30. Now, if I calculate this, let me calculate it. Uh, let me calculate it, guys. So 40, 140 minus 100 is 40, right? It's 40 divided by 15 divided by 30. So it is coming up to be fourteen point six. I am not sure, guys, but it's coming up to be fourteen point six. Okay, so this is what I'm getting. Just calculate, guys, uh, this particular value. 
Let me also try one more time and check whether it's correct or not. 15 divided by 30. So, into, okay. So it is something around 14.6. So Z is equal to 14.6, which is greater than our acceptance area, right? 0 0.025. Meaning this value will fall somewhere here. Somewhere here, right? Somewhere here it will fall. So if I use a different color. Somewhere here it will fall. So it is greater than this area. So we have to reject our null hypothesis. So our null hypothesis was that drug has no effect. Ultimately, drug has an effect on the population. Okay. So this is how we do this particular statement, problem statement. First of all, we defined our null hypothesis. We defined our alternate hypothesis. We have a decision rule. This is our decision rule. And we have the formula. And plug in the formula, the, all the values, we get the score and we imply our decision rule and then we know actually whether we will accept or reject our null hypothesis. Okay, guys, I can understand if it is for the first time, it will be a little bit difficult for you guys, but just rewind few seconds before and try to repeat whatever I have been saying and it will be definitely easy for you guys. Okay. So now let's me move to this one. Now I will leave this particular statement to you guys. It's a similar thing. Just uh, pause this video and try to solve this. To just give you a brief idea, here they're saying that uh, the petrol price in Melbourne is normally distributed with a mean. So here mu is given 92. And then uh, standard deviation is also given, which is 3.1. 3.1 and so we know we need to apply Z test, right? And then uh, we need to test whether this price is true or false. So for that, we draw samples. So what is N? N is 50. And then mean X bar is 93.6. So all these values are given and you know what to perform also. Why Z test? Because our population standard deviation has been given. So I leave it to you guys to solve this one. Okay, it will be similar to the one that we have just solved. So you follow the process. You have to define a null hypothesis, define an alternate hypothesis, create the decision rule, draw the diagram if required, and then conclude based on the formula whether you will accept your null hypothesis or reject. Okay. Now this one is also similar. I will say, guys. Uh, similar to what I have shown. So please, uh, here only the difference is the significance level is 0 0.01, which is not an issue. If, if you can solve it for 0 0.05, you can very well solve it for 0 0.01 also. Right? All these tasks that I'm giving to you, if, if in any case you are not able to do it, please let me know in the comment box and I will definitely help you guys. Okay, but the more you would do by yourself, the more easy it will be for you to understand, right? I can show you, I can give you the formulas, I can, uh, you know, help you to know the tricks. But end of the day, it's you who have to learn it, right? So uh, it's better if you do it by yourself. If in case you find any problem, let me know in the comment section, and I will definitely try to help you. Okay. So, okay, so this is, I guess, the last problem. Uh, yes, this is the last problem. So in a small town of 10, in a small town, 10 years from now, let's say, the age of individuals were found out to be the following. Less than 18 years are 10%. Within 1835 or 40%. Greater than 35 or 50%. In the present year, 500 individuals were sampled and we find out the following. 
250 are less than 18 200 are between 18 and 35 and 250 are greater than 35 using a 5% margin of error can we conclude that the distribution of ages has changed in 10 years now this particular example guys or a problem statement is of a uh, test of association or we call it test of independence or we can also call it as chi square test okay chi square test <laughs> when you will do practically in any data set there is a formula or rather than a library which solves for you the entire test but here we will try to learn the formula actually so test of association test of independence or chi square test so this problem statement is based on this here we want to see whether there is any change that has happened okay so there is any change that has happened so it is the same thing it is the same data okay we are talking about the same data which is age so this same variable we want to see after a time period whether it has any impact or not so here we are trying to find out the test of association is there in association after let's say 5 years or 10 years whether the age has impacted due to maybe you know there has been improvement in the medical facilities in that particular area so the longevity of the people may have increased or the other way around maybe it has gone worse we don't know so test of association or test of independence or chi square test now i will talk in detail about this test chi square test f test anova which is anova test also and t test separately as i have already said but for now just try to understand this particular problem statement okay so what is the formula for chi square first of all chi square is denoted by this chi square this is the chi is summation of frequency of observed minus frequency of expected whole square divided by frequency of expected now again guys you don't have to remember this formula you don't have to memorize this formula guys but when you are dealing any with any problem statement just refer google or anywhere and you can get the formula very easily getting the formula is not uh, difficult understanding the problem statement is important where we will apply is very important okay so let me uh, rub this thing oh sorry i guess if i rub then everything will be gone Never mind. So now uh, let's uh, try to solve this problem. So we know the formula now. Okay, F frequency observed minus frequency expected divided by frequency expected. Now, what is frequency observed? If you see this particular problem statement, nothing but this. These are the observed frequencies. Okay, these are the observed frequencies: fifty, two hundred, two hundred fifty. what is expected expected is this right less than 18% uh, 18 years should be 10% so whether it is 50 is less in falling in this 10% or not we don't know 200 so between 18 and 35 it should be 45 40% so whether this 200 is falling in this 40% or not we don't know we need to find out we need to do a chi square test to find out the test of association right so there is also a chi square table guys there is a chi square table through which we can know so the acceptance areas and everything so we know the margin here right 5% meaning 0.05 is alpha what is the degrees of freedom degrees of freedom very simple guys degrees of freedom is 2 how because number of observations number of categories here what is a category 1 2 3 three categories we have right 
we have category 1 category 2 and category 3 so total n is 3 so what is d degrees of freedom is 2 and minus 1 right so we know alpha we know degrees of freedom and we wanted to see can you conclude that the distribution of ages has changed meaning what whether it has increased or decreased so it's a two tail test it's a two tail test whether it has increased or decreased the question if it would have been like the to conclude whether distribution of age has increased in 10 years then we would have gone for one tail test because in that scenario we would have considered this positive cases not the negative cases but here in this case it is saying distribution of ages has changed or not changed means whether increased or decreased since it is either of them we have to consider two tail test you need to know guys where we consider two tail test and when we consider one tail test okay so let's see the chi square table let me share the chi square table again you can find this uh, chi square table in the google let me share my chi square table so this is the chi square table guys okay this is the chi square table so you see degrees of freedom is 2 because n was 3 right so degrees of freedom is 2 right and then what is what is uh, the significance level 0.05 so what is the area or what is the value it's 5.991 so we are looking at this value 5.991 so if i go back 5.991 right so so we know the acceptance is 5 0.991 for 5% significance level or margin of error meaning 0.05 so if my area or if my value is greater than this so this is let's say 5.991 this is 5.991 minus because it is symmetrical if my area uh give me one more if my value is greater than this then i will reject my null hypothesis accept my alternate hypothesis right if it is less than minus 5.991 i will reject my null hypothesis or i will accept my alternate hypothesis either of them okay so now we need to have the formula so formula is already known let me write it here again so get me get one new color so let, let's say this 50 right so i am writing it out 50 and 200 and then 250 okay 50 200 250 so this is this is nothing but the mm, Let me rub this portion. This is nothing but the observed. Okay, we need to find out the FE expected. Expected how we know this is five hundred, right? Five hundred samples we have, right? So less than eighteen. Eighteen is ten years, right? So ten ten percent of five hundred is what? Fifty, right? Fifty. So, this is fifty. Then forty. Forty percent of five hundred. What is forty percent of five hundred? Forty into five hundred divided by hundred. It's two hundred. And. Fifty percent of five uh, hundred is two fifty, right? Uh, I guess there has been a small uh, problem. Maybe we need to change these values. 
if we change these values then probably or else everything will be zero if you see 50 minus 50 this this minus this will be zero never mind guys so let's do one thing in this case here let's consider it to be uh, somewhere around 45 maybe or let's say it is 60 this is let's say um, 100 so 60 and 100 is 160 and uh, 160 right so 500 minus 160 340 so let's this will be 340 now it will be okay right so this is 60 this is 100 100 let me rub and write it properly so the new values guys just sorry for for this uh, confusion uh, when I was creating the problem statement, I might have not considered the this uh, zero scenarios and all. Just a number uh, change, guys. So instead of 50, you just assume it to be 60. Okay. Instead of 200, just assume it to be 100. And instead of 250, just assume it to be 350, 340. Okay. 340. And this is the expected values, right? So 10% of 500. 40% of 500 and 50% of 500. These are the expected values and these are the observed values. So observed values are this 60, 100, 340. Expected is, expected is something like which you are already expecting, right? So we know that till 10 years, less than 18 was 10%. So what is expected? So how many samples we have gathered? 500. So expected is 10% of 500. For this range, expected is 40% of 500. This is expected because it has been there since 10 years. So this is the expected. And this one is for the new year, which is the present year. So it is observed. That's, that's the frequency for the observed values. Right? Now just put this in this formula. Just put this in this formula. 60. So for this summation, right? Summation. So 60 minus 50 whole square by 50 plus 100 minus 200 100 minus 200 whole square by 200 plus 340 minus 250 by 250 this is whole square so i believe you will get one value by square after doing the calculation, just find it out, guys. What is the value? Okay, so if the value is uh, greater than five point nine nine one, you will reject your null hypothesis. What was your null hypothesis? The null hypothesis was that there was no uh, change in the distribution of age. So null hypothesis there is okay so it's a uh, positive scenario so there is a change in the distribution of age and what is our alternate hypothesis there is no change so when you will find out the value and you compare it whether it's greater than 5.991 if it is greater than, you will reject your null hypothesis and you will say that there is no change. But if it is less than, then you will accept your null hypothesis. Okay. So this is all about uh, the tutorials. Right? This, there we have done a couple of uh, problem statements. As I have already mentioned that in every, uh, in every, uh, algorithms or in every basic statistics, whenever there will be some uh, maths or uh, some sort of uh, problems to solve, I will definitely bring those up. So this is not the end. You can search in Google also and try to find out a few more examples that you can solve uh, for this kind of statistical tests. Okay. So today we discussed 
quite a few things we know now what is null hypothesis how to do null hypothesis what are the processes for null hypothesis this particular test we have done student distribution z test chi square test now we know what when to apply what for z test and student t test for f test and t test i will uh, cover in uh, forthcoming videos not currently because there are few things you need to know before doing them numpy and pandas why i am telling numpy and pandas because i will try to do this test with the help of libraries and practical practical data sets because in real life you will deal with this data sets only okay so you will not get this sort of problems this sort of, sort of problems are just for your understanding guys remember just for your understanding in real life you will deal with the data sets so i will cover them that's the reason and these are very important tests so i will cover once i cover this for following topics so i am remained with few more topics in uh, statistics which is uh, something about correlation there are two types of uh, correlation that we will study and then probably i guess uh, what is left uh, okay so there is something called interquartile range iqa i will also discuss that and then finally we'll wrap wrap the basic statistics parts then further if it is required i will add few more uh, things as and long we go ahead okay so with this uh, thank you guys come this particular tutorial comes to an end uh, do subscribe my channel like this video and uh, just practice hard keep learning keep shining and a very happy new year to all and uh, do share this guys because there are so many other uh, people who who might be interested in data science and who want to start from the very scratch and since this course that i am starting is really from the very scratch so it will really give them the base and then gradually as i will go along covering all the machine learning algorithms and topics and maths behind them it will be easier for them also to understand and for you also so please share this video share it with your colleagues uh, as as much as possible and uh, i have just started this channel in um, i guess in in a week's time and i have quite a few subscribers so thanks 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 for subscribing subscribing my channel and uh, thank you keep learning keep shining bye bye